Montgomery Road and Dana Avenue. My name is Frank Gilmer. Uh, I worked along with uh, about five engineers who are listed as followers. Um, this is our location. Uh, we're the far west of the site in Evanston. Uh, and on the left here, zooms in a little bit closer. You have 71 running through. And then I'm at the very corner of Montgomery Road and Dana Avenue, um, right, right just east of Xavier's campus. Um, so these sort of show the existing conditions and my vision for the TUD in this site. Uh, just going over some of the photos. Uh, these are all taken along Dana Avenue. Uh, the top two are actually facing north towards Dana. Basically, uh, what existed there is some sparse commercial retail um, and a little bit of light industry, but for the most part, it was parking lots, open space. And then down here on the left is actually the south side of Dana Avenue which basically exists right now as abandoned housing, dilapidated housing, underused housing. Uh, so those are my two areas of focus for this TUD. And my vision for it was to create a transit-oriented development around the Lawson Way Trail that has a mixture of housing types, uh, as well as retail, restaurants, and entertainment uh, that will be inviting to everyone, residents, students, visitors who are using the Lawson Way Trail. Um, also to create uh, new public green spaces that will create a new identity in this Evanston neighborhood and will benefit the surrounding developments uh, being University Station and the uh, Evanston Neighborhood Business District. Uh, so this is sort of my concept diagram. Uh, I'm going to get way more into all these things later in the presentation, but uh, basically we have row houses to the very south of the site replacing the dilapidated and abandoned housing that exists. Uh, to the north we have a retail and commercial retail and restaurant area as well as some mixed use buildings to, um, to the left. And then at the far north of the site is going to be where all the green space but as well as there's some townhomes up there as well. And then the gray represents um, the, my anticipation for where pedestrian activity will take place. Uh, the highest uh, pedestrian activity I anticipate being uh, in the retail and um, entertainment area, second being in the public green space up between the two townhomes, and then it doesn't really show up well on this, but there's actually a light gray around all the uh, residential being uh, where there'll be probably the lowest amount of pedestrian activity. So. Which, which one is Lexington? Lexington is the far top, and then the blue is the washing okay. Yeah, sorry. Um, so this is my proposed new development. Um, I'll get into each category a little bit more in depth, but this is the overall, what the new site plan would look like. Um, as I mentioned, there'd be a variety of housing types, uh, being townhomes, row houses, and apartments. Um, it's a yellow button. Oh, perfect. Okay. Um, so the, re the housing, as I mentioned, will be down below. Uh, mixed use would have apartments above and then the townhomes uh, up to the north. Uh, the retail restaurants and entertainment, which would be pretty much in this area right here. Uh, as I mentioned, the mixed use buildings. And then uh, public spaces would be here. Um, there's a gazebo and sort of drawing point there. And then we have the, the paths that surround an amphitheater. Uh, in this area, and then in the plaza areas down here between the mixed use and retail spaces uh, would be sort of just like some permanent furniture being chairs, patios, that sort of thing. Um, my real focus for this was to create um, a pedestrian area that allows for automobiles rather than in most uh, retail spaces it's sort of an auto uh, area that allows for pedestrians, so that was my main focus to make pedestrians more um, in the forefront and it allows for cars because obviously people will drive here, but um, they're sort of taking the secondary. So having these green spaces in the middle and a lot of uh, crossing points at different parts within the site will make it more pedestrian friendly. Um, so diving into the mixed use area, which again is down here highlighted, uh, there's four, it's a, there are three four-story four buildings um, with the first rail, first story being retail and the top three being apartments. Uh, there's almost 45,000 total square feet of retail within the three buildings. Um, there are 140 total apartment units available doing uh, basically a two bedroom, 950 square foot apartment 
for each. Um, this is basically the densest area of the site, being since the buildings are the tallest. Um, they're, they're next to a small four-story parking garage, which I'll go into later on in the parking. But uh, this is the densest area um, of the site so far. Our existing. This is a street section view of what it might look like. As you can see, you have the four-story buildings on each side um, with sidewalks on each side. And then you have a diagonal parking, 45 degree diagonal parking, um, two driving lanes, and a green space in the middle, which will allow for easier crossing uh, from one side of the street to the other. And within that, uh, some, some trails on the green as well. Uh, precedent example for this is uh, the Livermore Village in California. Uh, it's a mixed use infill development project uh, that's transit oriented a block away from a bus and rail multimodal center. So semi-close, since it doesn't have a hub or anything like that, uh, similar to my study, it just sort of runs near it. But um, the buildings have retail on the first floor with residential uh, above and uses structured parking to keep development pedestrian friendly. Uh, I thought this related really well to not only just the style of the buildings around it, but also having the green space in the middle and the sort of loop, because at this area, if cars are driving down, they will have to loop around uh, in my side as well. So I thought it was a good precedent example to uh, represent what I would like to see. Moving on to the retail area, which is to the eastern part of the site. Uh, there are four one-story buildings, uh, 66,850 total square feet of new retail space. Uh, they're surrounded by, as I mentioned, two parking garages here. This is the largest of the two, and then one here. But there also is some dispersed uh, surface parking. Uh, as well as having three plaza areas, uh, which, as I mentioned, would have some sort of permanent fur furniture, big tables and chairs, as well as this one, we could have a fountain or something to draw people into that area. So this, to me, makes the most desirable sense to have just strictly retail because of the activity and the surrounding uh, parking and plaza amenities. An uh, example of just a regular commercial area that I thought would work well is Mashpee Commons in Massachusetts. Uh, it's a converted strip mall that's now pedestrian-friendly Talon Center with a variety of uses being commercial, residential, um, retail, entertainment. Uh, their design is strictly focused on pedestrians. As you can see here, they actually use like a, they call it like a pop-out sidewalk area to make sidewalks a little bit wider and to make the crossing across the street a little bit simpler. Uh, so it's more design focused on pedestrians rather than cars. And the buildings are accurate to the area, which I think is important. You know, you don't want your new design to stand out and not fit in with the surrounding community. So that should be taken into account, into account when creating this site. Uh, so I mentioned parking. This goes a little bit into it. Uh, my engineers focused on this for one of theirs, so they'll dive more into it on Thursday. Uh, but basically, in the surface parking lots here, We'll have 140 surface parking spaces um, dispersed throughout the site. And then also we have two main four-story structured garages, being the largest one being here at the eastern end of the site, and then uh, this being a little bit smaller, which provide 230 additional parking spaces. And then we have three auto access points uh, along on Dana, you can see right here. Um, and they line up with Wabash Avenue, Trimble Avenue, and Beavis Avenue. Okay, and then just moving on to housing, uh, the townhomes, which are up here, there are nine uh, two-story housing with three units per building. Uh, they have clustered surface parking here, which provides the necessary parking that they'll need, uh, but it also allows for more green space rather than committing to a huge uh, parking lot in one area. Um, they're in close proximity to the Watson Way Trail as well as um, having a view. My real the real estate group that I met with was really, really believed that this would be a good idea to have viewpoints of the Watson Way Trail. I think people are going to want to see it. Um, so creating, you know, to where almost all these buildings have somewhat of a view of the Watson Way Trail, uh, they believe would be beneficial. And then the row houses down here on the south, um, they're three, three story buildings. 31 total units within the three buildings. Uh, the surface parking is located in the rear behind the buildings. 
Uh, and as I mentioned before, it replaces the dilapidated and abandoned housing that runs along Dana Avenue and has the ability to just uh, make Dana Avenue more interesting. You know, right now it's, it's pretty run down, especially on the south side here before you get to the Evanston Senior Center right here. And then these are just some residential examples that I thought could work well. Uh, the Capitol Hill row houses, uh, which are located in Geneva, Nebraska. These I like just because they're more traditional. As I mentioned, you want uh, to have a design that fits well within the community. Um, I think these would work with the existing housing stock surrounding. And then the Fremont Six townhouses are located in Seattle. Uh, they have three units as well. In this case, they run horizontally to whereas I would and are three stories, to whereas the ones I would have would be two stories, but three units across. But they do have small buildings uh, clustered in an area, so I thought that they related well to the, the type of townhousing that I was proposing. Uh, and then focusing on the pedestrian areas, um, as I mentioned, there's sort of two public spaces. You have a public spaces, which is here, and then you have what I would call a semi-private green space here and here. Um, what I mean by semi-private green space is basically these paths are connecting the townhouses together or to the parking or to the Watson Way Trail. Um, I mean, that's not to say that they're going to be gated or anything like that. People, if interested, could walk through them, but I envision more people who live here using these paths and uh, the public or visitors using these areas right here. Uh, again, as I mentioned, having a gazebo similar to, to the one in Washington Park. A uh, nice size, something that draws people across the trail into this area, and then two paths intersecting here that have an amphitheater on one side, and then these two sides being open uh, for small public gatherings um, or just you know people to enjoy the grass. And then my green space examples for these are the amphitheater idea, sort of coming from the Purelisk Arts Park in Montpelier, Vermont. Uh, I like this idea because they have the path going around similar to mine. They have the amphitheater on one side, which allows for scheduled events, you know, public events, but also they have an open space for people who, you know, just want to have a small gathering or, uh, you know, bring a towel or some uh, chairs and sit in the open green space. And then the campus connectivity, uh, Livingston Campus open space in Rutgers University. This is probably a little bit bigger than the size that I was proposing, but it's semi-public or private, however you want to look at it. It connects their residential buildings here and here, uh, and it allows students, in this case, to move uh, from different buildings or to different parts of campus. Uh, so that's why that was chosen for that area. And finally, this is my final slide, uh, perspective view. I think this gives a good example of what the development would feel like. You have the four-story buildings here, um, four-story parking garage here and here with the one-story buildings, uh, lots of green space within. You get some permanent furniture in these plaza areas here. You have your row houses running this way, and then uh, townhouses and green space here, as well as uh, your gazebo type area, drawing people from this area through here, and then your your public path with the small amphitheater on this side and your open space over here.